Hey guys, welcome back. This is where we left off with in the last video where I introduced the moment area method. So quick recap is basically you have a loaded structure, usually a beam in this case. Um, it's got a deflected shape and we pick two points of interest that we want to find the relative slope between. Um, so in this case, you draw the tangent on point A and you draw the tangent on point B of the deflected structure. And just by drawing the M over EI diagram, which is just the bending moment diagram divided by the flexural rigidity, which would be given to you in a problem, um, that that value corresponds to the difference in angles in these two tangent lines, and it's uh, units of radians. And then in the second moment area theorem, basically all we do is we take a, we work with a little centroids of it a little bit, and uh, we're able to find out this tangential deviation, which is like the vertical separation between the two tangent lines at the point of interest that we're trying to find information about. Now, if we did this problem where we picked A and B to be like both some random place along the span of a simply supported beam, we're going to get this, this difference in angles between the two, but we don't actually know what this angle is, and we don't know what that angle is. So so that would be kind of a useless problem. Same thing if we actually found this tangential deviation. Um, that's not necessarily the deflection at point B here. It's the difference between the, uh, the vertical separation between the tangent lines at point B. So this is a useful way to draw it just for the explanation of how it works. But if we're actually trying to solve information about a problem, uh, we're, we're not going to be picking points like in the middle of a span. So when we come down to a problem that's something like a, uh, a cantilever beam here. When we're thinking about where to place A and B, well typically these problems are going to be asking us like what is the slope and deflection at the free end of the cantilever beam if we uh, apply a load like this. So if we did, we would get a deflected shape something like this, where obviously it's going to be bending down towards the free end, but if you have a fixed rigid connection, it stays uh, basically undeformed right at the connection even when the rest of the beam is deformed. So in the undeformed section, uh, in the undeformed system, this is uh, forming a 90 degree angle. It's coming horizontal from the wall. And right at the, the reaction here in the deformed case, we're still saying that that's still coming out at zero degrees. So if we were to call this point A and, uh, and then this point B, if we drew the tangent to the curve at point A, it's going to be a horizontal line coming straight out. And then if we drew a tangent to the curve at point B, it's going to look like that. Now if we apply the first moment area theorem, then basically we're going to result with the relative angle of B relative to A. So TB, the tangent B down here, so it's going to be this angle right here. So theta B relevant to A is going to be this angle, but this actually will be the angle that the uh, that the end here is experiencing because this tangent line is on the curve and because we've set this up in a sensible way where we're picking point A here as a for our tangent as A it's a horizontal line then when we find an angle relative to a horizontal line and that's actually going to be the angle of this given that this tangent line is the slope at the free end and then when we also use the second moment area, th area theorem to find the tangential deviation which is basically the vertical separation between the two tangent lines at point B, um, given that we're inspecting the interval A to B, so that's exactly how we should be doing it. Uh, so this will be T B with respect to A. Now this tangent curve, uh, this tangent line is right on the, uh, the deflected shape there, and so if we find at point B, so if we find the, uh, the, the vertical separation between this tangent curve, this tangent line, and this tangent line at point B, then that's the actual deflection of the structure. So that's really meaningful to us because unlike this example, the introductory example, this tangential deviation is not necessarily the deflection of the structure. It's the difference, the distance between those tangents. Um, but in this case, we've set up the problem in a way so that at point B, the distance between these tangents is the actual distance between the undeflected and the deflected beam. Okay, so to go ahead with this problem, we're going to need to draw the bending moment diagram. If you want to draw the shear force diagram first, that's okay, it might help you. But ultimately, we're just looking for the bending moment diagram, which we have here. Now, the next step in this problem is uh, we, want to, we just want the M over EI diagram. So literally, we take the bending moment diagram, you draw it again, and you put it right below. And all you do is you just say this is M over EI. And then you take whatever values you have here. So we're starting at this bottom here. So that went that went to zero and that went to zero. And we're literally just putting this is over EI. 
this is all you do to go from a bending moment diagram to an M over EI. So typically now what I would do is before we start thinking about applying the, the, the various theorems is just pick off as much geometry from this as you can. So we're going to need the area. Um, and so this is going to be one half base times height. And uh, so we get one half, the base is L, we've got that up here. And uh, the height is uh, negative PL over EI. Okay, so that is just going to simplify to negative PL squared over 2 EI. And then for the second part of, the or for the second theorem, we're going to need the distance of the centroid uh, basically to, to B. So that is X bar. And for a triangle, X bar is 2 thirds L um, for uh, when we're going towards the short side of the triangle. But when we apply the first moment area theorem, the only thing that we need is just the area, and we've already calculated the area here. So uh, theta b with respect to a is just the area of the m over ei diagram from a to b, so it's just negative pl squared over 2 ei for this case where we have a, a cantilever beam with a single point load. Then when we apply the second moment area theorem, basically we just have x bar, which we already know, it's 2 thirds l, times area, which is uh, negative PL squared over 2EI. All right, and when we just combine those two together, we get negative PL cubed over 3EI. So when we think about this, this is theta BA. This is suggesting that this is a negative angle and that's coming down from the horizontal. So that is actually the angle that we're getting here. And, uh, and then when we're looking at the tangential deviation, negative PL cubed over 3EI, like we said before, this is the actual deflection because this tangent is on the actual point of the deflected structure that we're inspecting. And if we want to check our work against the tables, then we're going to see for a cantilever beam here with a single point load on the end, that yeah, theta B, we're actually expecting negative PL squared over 2EI, and then for deflection, negative PL cubed over 3EI, which is exactly what we're getting here when we use the moment area method. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And again, when you're doing moment area method, for, don't forget that when you're taking an interval A to B, make sure that on one side of that interval is the point that you're looking for information about, and the other side of the interval is, uh, is a point that you have some information about whether or not it's slope or it's deflection. So join me in the next couple of videos, and we'll go over a few examples, and you guys will be able to see the patterns here.